Hi, this is attorney Mike Gravel. I'm coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today I've got a whole new background. It's got the, oh, well, it's Navy Pier with the Ferris wheel out there. It's right in the neighborhood. I've got, well, pay no attention to my fancy t-shirt. None whatsoever. You might, you, there's no way you could get one unless you went to the merch link in the description below. But uh, we are going to take a look at Wild Court Moments number nine. I get a bunch in the, in the I'm just telling you right now, it, it's not that wild, it's kind of wild, but I've got a series going. So that's what we're doing here, okay? So if anyone tells me it's Mild Court Moments, I'm telling you right now, I will hunt you down and I will have Frankie Nally lick your face off. I'll text them real quick and see if they can log on. Good afternoon, Mr. Ballard. Good afternoon, Milton. How are you? How are how are what you say? Well, probably better if you weren't sitting in there, but we're gonna talk about some things here. Oh, no. This yeah, is file two zero one zero two two. You were put on probation last summer for use of methamphetamine and it didn't go very well. We had an earlier probation violation hearing and I agreed to continue your probation and try to get over the hump here. Your Honor, Chris CNC said that she can log in. All right. It's just, this is an interesting court appearance. He knows this guy, he's a repeat offender. He's really young, he's, he's messed up and it just shows as, as, as if we haven't already seen it, but uh, Judge Middleton's human side, he uh, he's, you know, this uh, defendant is doing himself no favors whatsoever, but Judge Middleton is trying to help him. And uh, but, but as we get there, it is kind of funny and sad. Uh, we're going to wait for your attorney to join us here. Thank you, Deborah. Sure. Who are you, Mrs. Davis? Ms. Davis? Ms. Davis is from the she's from the prosecutor's office. Okay. Um, she was in practice here in the county, but. This year, 2021, she's joined the prosecutor's staff. So cool. you might have met her before. <laughs> cool. Oh, I mean, that's the that's the thing with this defendant. He's he's out of it. Uh, he's he's all, he's got a drug problem, but uh, he, he's he's kind of charming and funny. Uh, I might have back in uh, juvenile days. My juvenile days are. Well behind me. Oh, I know. I saw you on YouTube last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an old folks home. You were at an old. That was funny. <laughs> I was at a friend's house in Sturgis, and I was clicking through YouTube, and you came up. I was like, "Oh, you're Milton. I'll go see him soon." <laughs> what do you know? What happened? It did. It really. Uh, uh, all right, well, how did you get arrested yesterday? I got arrested. Um, so I was in Sturgis visiting a friend, and um, I was supposed to have a barbecue with my buddy. And he moved in an apartment. All right, so how I got arrested, right? Well, did they just come somewhere where you were and then found there was a warrant for your arrest? Yeah, yeah, because there was... I, I was trying to find to where my buddy lives, so I was knocking on each apartment, you know what I mean? So it's cause of suspicion. Why am I here? You know, I'm on these properties, I wouldn't do nothing wrong. You know? What time what time was that? That was um uh about four three thirty to five o'clock in the morning this morning. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder, no wonder you got arrested. Um, well, right. the barbecue was supposed to happen the night before, you know what I mean? I think well, you were a little late for the barbecue. But let's not go down that path any further, but it Oh Lord, he just wanted to know if the guy got picked up off a warrant or or he got arrested on a new charge is basically all he wanted to do. Uh, first of all, he, he was cracking up and, and Deborah Davis for that matter. Uh, talking about YouTube and all that business, but uh, you know, 
Judge Middleton just wants to know what the story is, but but as as the defendant speaks, he's incriminating himself all day long, so he's, he's trying to tamp it down now. Well, at least his attorney's here. Explains how you got picked up on the warrant. Christine, thank you for joining yeah. us on short notice. Um, Autumn is not available, his probation agent, but as you recall, you lobbied very hard for this young man to continue his probation. First of all, you lobbied to get him this misdemeanor plea deal. Then he was struggling in several different arenas. Um, and you lobbied for me to continue his probation, which I did. Um, and then it didn't work well. April, uh, April Autumn has filed a petition alleging that he continued to use intoxicants, which violates his probation. So that's the gist of this arraignment. Uh, he also failed to appear for the hearing yesterday. He got arrested last night banging on doors in an apartment complex at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning. That's when the KGB used to go to people's doors. 4 o'clock a.m. is determined to be people's low point. So when the Russian Secret Service was going to arrest people, they did it at 4 a.m. So he probably scared the hell out of everybody in the apartment complex. Anyway, he got arrested, A, for not appearing, and B, for allegedly violating his probation. So, Mr. Ballard, the allegation is that you continued to violate your probation on this use of methamphetamine charge by A, continuing to use or failing to test, and B, by failing to report for your probation violation arraignment. Uh, you have the right to have a hearing on that. Ms. Yancey is here, and she could represent you on that hearing. You also have the right to admit it. If you did have a hearing, it would have to be proven beyond a preponderance, excuse me, probable cause, which is much less than proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, the new legislation, the criminal justice reform legislation, takes effect today and that prescribes the judge's ability to do sanctions on the probation violation. I think Autumn's recommendation was that I revoke the probation and give all the additional time. This is a second violation. I think most I could order would be 10 days under the brand new legislation and revoke his probation. I don't intend to keep trying to drag this three-wheeled cart up a steep hill. Um, so if he admits to the violation, Christine, it's a second violation. I would order 10 days jail, revoke his probation, get off his back. You want to speak to him in a breakout room? Yes, Your Honor, I would. Thank you. All right. Kayla, is there any way to... put... Okay, so the interesting thing here is this, and I can do it faster. That I saw the context and I also understand what's going on. This guy gets picked up uh, banging on doors at four o'clock in the morning. He's already got a warrant for his arrest. He's got a problem with meth. I, that's obviously the case here. The judge is really trying to help him. It doesn't come through in this particular thing. He calls in Deborah Davis and the attorney so that he can um, arraign this guy right now so he can help him, maybe get him out or maybe have him plead, maybe, maybe do something. Otherwise, he's just being held. So he actually takes it out of turn and puts it together. And that's that's really a favor to this defendant. Not, not, not specific. He just he just feels for him. He's just like he's a young guy in a bad path. And and uh, we let, let's attend to his business if possible. I have a question. Yes. Just a minute, Caleb. I'll be with you. OK, uh, I, I love that. <laughs> the attorney's like, oh, please. Oh, please, please do not do not say anything else to the judge. He was our, she, he was incriminating himself as she logged on to the call and she's about to talk to him in a private breakout room and, and advise him. So she just she just doesn't want him to say anything else right now. Talk to him and then we'll see you. All right. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe or the dogs get it. He's back. Uh, Mr. Ballard, did you want to talk? Was there something else you wanted to ask Christine about? Or yeah. Um, well, do, wait a minute. Um, all right. Let me put you back in the room. Okay. All right, we're back. We're still on the record. We're still on YouTube and we're still recording. <coughs> Mr. Ballard, the allegation is that you failed to report for your probation violation hearing, the arraignment which resulted in your arrest last night. Um, 
You also are alleged to have continued to use a controlled substance or drink alcohol after I saw you last time. You've had an opportunity to discuss this with your lawyer, Ms. Yancey. What do you wish to do? Your Honor, he's going to be making an admission today. All right. Tell me what... Well, first of all, why didn't you show up for court? I didn't know uh, um, you guys sent it to me, actually. I don't um, I don't even know if you guys knew what address to send it to. You should probably uh, send it out to both addresses. So, and I'm not living there. I uh, I got kicked out of my old, um, my, uh, where I used to live at the trailer, out on, uh, in Menden. Kirby Road? So, yeah, Kirby Road, there you go. Thank you. After, after I last saw you, um, did you continue to use methamphetamine? Uh, partially. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but that that's that's too funny. I it it, it is really difficult. Um, the poor thing, he he got kicked out of a trailer. This is where he's at in life. Um, that that's pretty bad. But he's still, it's funny, he kind of, you can see he has respect for Judge Middleton and he's, and he's sort of polite. It's just, it's, it's funny the way he reacts. I guess that's, that's what's sort of humorous about it. He's, uh, he's got a drug problem and he's doing the wrong things. Um, but that's mixed with, uh, somebody who's, who's also got some good qualities. Partially. Yeah. Partially because of this purpose. What are you doing now? Um, not the right thing, sir. Well, right now, yeah. when I got picked yeah. up last so, night, I was not doing the right thing. Were you high last night? Um, vividly. So I, I, uh, I got high about a day before, and I was coming down. And I was real tired because I was at the barbecue. You know what I mean? So it just hung overnight. So. You know, get picked up in the morning. I'm not all night long. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was vividly high, and then he says, "You know what I mean to Judge Middleton." You know, when you're coming down from from a meth high. <laughs> oh, because I got a phone. Because I, you know, broke my phone. So this is this kind of how the story goes. All right. How do you feel right now? Do you understand everything I'm saying? I I understand everything. I'm all there, man. I promise him all there. All right. Yeah. I, uh, well, also, this no longer requires that their license be suspended. Okay. Mr. Ballard, well, you and I have talked about this. I know your grandpa, your grandma, I knew your mom since she was your age. I don't really like you seeing go down this crash and burn path that you're on. But I have not accomplished very much under the terms of this probation. And I could keep hitting you over the head with a stick and put you in jail about every other month. And that's not accomplishing much. My fear is you're going to do something really dumb. And then we're going to be in here on some serious felony charge. What my wish for you is that you would get it together. But just because I wish that that happened doesn't mean it's going to. But you're struggling, and I haven't done much to pull you back from the waterfall. Now I'm just going to let you go, and whether you go over it or not is up to you. Ten days jail, credit one, leaving nine days to serve. Zero fine and costs, and probation is revoked. I don't know if they charge you with anything else like disorderly person or that sort of thing, or they just arrested you on this warrant. But... Uh, I know Autumn would have recommended more than that, but the law changed today and it prescribes a judge's ability to sanction people for probation violation. Um, it changed today? Yep, April Fool. Wow, what there. a day. What a day. All right. I, I don't know what he means by that. Uh, he, generally, he's, he's been very um, polite and respectful of the judge. So I, I don't know if he's being sarcastic there or not about what a day, but uh, the first of all, it's interesting that the, the law changed in Michigan and, and uh, Middleton's aware of that and and uh, is is literally 
changing what he's doing day one. That's pretty cool. It just stays that up to, up to the law. But the other thing is it's helping him. He just said that uh, the, the, press, the, the main prosecutor would have asked for more and, you know, under the law, but he can just go ahead and do it now. So he's giving the guy 10 days. So he's, he's not trying to be difficult. He's trying to be nice. Right now you go in there, go to sleep, get your brain straightened out. 10 days really isn't enough for you to get your brain crevice straight, but the law limits the some Great. extent to what I can do. You need about 90 days to get your synapses to fire correctly. Uh, you're so young, you're doing so much irreversible damage to yourself, it's hard to watch. So my hope is you don't come back for a while. My fear is I'm going to see you before Memorial Day, and then we'll address it at that time. Mr. Ballard, good luck to you. You're off probation when you get out of jail. You won't have to report, you won't have to pay, and you won't have to test. Well, there you have it. It's both funny and sad and it really highlights judge middleton's humanity uh he's he's closer to this I, I'll, I'll get a bunch of questions i'll just say it right now in the comments is there some is there some conflict no it's a smaller county it's not a huge population of course he knows people in the county and grew up with them no he's not giving special favors yes he cares that's just what goes on uh, you know, in, in these things. So everything, everything is above board and appropriate. He's got it out on YouTube for just this reason. So if anyone wants to have those questions, they can say, well, that's what happened in court. Um, he, he, you know, you can tell it bothers him personally. He's probably fond of these people in this family and familiar with them. And he doesn't like to see one of their kids go down this path. And that's what he said. And I, I believe he means it. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court. And every once in a while, and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.